Today's video is sponsored by Grim Hollow's New Player's Handbook. Do you remember the Wish Video D&D story I told a while back? Of course you do, because I've brought it up in like three different videos now. Well, this is gonna be the fourth video, so here we go! Now, if you haven't watched any of my other content before, here's a very brief rundown of what happened. You get all that? Cool. So the only thing you need to know to understand the complex machinations of this video would be that a few of the players made new characters, and one of them now had an item strong enough to make them a god. Wait, what? That player's character was Sebastian, a bard who stole a set of magical cards from someone through the night and had been in possession of it ever since. And yes, this is the deck of many things. A very deadly, very random, and very overpowered set of cards that can cause complete anarchy or unrivaled blessings to whoever thinks it would be a good idea to draw from it. Now. Obviously, Sebastian did the only reasonable thing he could do with his newfound power, and decided to rent out his playing cards to... Random people on the street! For a mere 100 gold pieces per draw, take your pick and change your fate. I am not liable for any death, serious injury, curses, or loss of property you may experience while drawing cards. No refunds allowed. Random townspeople were paying Sebastian in the hopes of drawing a card to make them rich, offer them powerful wishes, or just die. You know, because that's a card you can draw. Also, since the original deck of many things was quite, how do I put this, murdery, we decided to homebrew up some balance changes for the deck to make the cards more plot focused and less random. This generally made the deck more powerful in the hands of the party, but I didn't really care because I felt it was just more organic this way. I'm also bringing this up now to build up foreshadowing, of course something horrible happens with the deck. So after two years of Sebastian completely monopolizing the lottery scene, we went through everyone else's downtime activities and wrapped up that session for the week. I was either on the toilet or watching YouTube at the time, or both in all honesty, when I realized something incredibly important about our last session that would change literally everything. Just to make sure, I checked our special rules for the deck of many things and realized that yes indeed, Sebastian's gonna be in for a rough time. Now in our special version of the deck, there's a card you can draw called Talons. Every magical item in your possession vanishes and appears in the hands of whoever hates you the most, basically giving your arch enemy all of your loot. After after two whole years of random people drawing obscene amounts of cards from the deck, we assumed someone could have drawn that card at some point or another. So I told Sebastian's player what happened and how some random dude, possibly thousands of miles away, now has his deck. If this message doesn't explain his new mindset, I don't know what would. Later on, the story specifically required the deck of many things for the party to move on. So now Sebastian had an excuse to track down wherever the heck the item went and to figure out how he could get it back. Back. Long story short, the party gathered clues around town and managed to track down its location. In the center of some abandoned shack was a large ominous portal that led off to a completely different galaxy, somewhere far, far from the Swords Coast. The new planet they were on was run by a hive mind of mind flares, all connected to a large elder brain. And what made things even weirder was the fact that a giant stadium was sitting right dab in the center of everything. Now what does any of this have to do with the playing cards that they came here for? Well, the party found a girl who gave them all a heads up on all the madness that's been ensuing ever since they lost the deck. My name is Raylene, and the person you're looking for is named Henry Gravers. Your playing cards randomly appeared on his doorstep one morning, which led up to him pulling eight cards. The first put him on the wanted list by a group of deadly thieves. The second summoned me to be his personal assistant slash waifu. The third and fourth made him super soul. The fifth one gave him a wish, and the sixth one summoned the Grim Reaper to collect his soul. He ended up wishing that he could slay the Grim Reaper, and ironically managed to kill Death. And when we thought everything would turn out okay in the end, Graver's last card ended up teleporting him here to be a prize in Mr. Big Brain's game tournament. Wait, but where's the card deck? Um, I guess he still has it with him. So what you're saying is, if we want to get the deck back, we need to... Oh yeah, it's about our real time, boys. Well... This just got a lot more complicated. So the party signed up with the Elder Brain to take part in the tourney, where they met up with the other contenders who would also be taking part. Looks like we're rivals, looking forward to a fair match. Yeah, same here. By the way, uh, who's that over there? No clue, 
He's been menacingly posing in that quarter for the last few hours. So, as the battle royale began, there were three teams each competing for the grand prize. You know the Nerve Gear headsets from SAO? Well, everyone taking part had to put one on so they could join the event. Also, just like SAO, if you died in the game, you'd die in real life. The mission? Be the team who could deal the killing blow on a murderous dragon turtle sitting in the middle of a deserted island. It'd be nearly impossible for a single team to take on the beast themselves, and my expectation was that once one of the groups would go to fight it, the other teams would show up and balance things out. <coughs> More foreshadowing. All right, we don't have time to f around. Bard, make some weapons. Druid, find us sunflowers. Wizard trap, give me some f clay. We're gonna beat fantasy with science. Uh, hey, Anna, could you, I don't know, tell me what you're planning to do with all these materials? <laughs> You'll know when I'm done. How about now? No. What about now? No. All right, can you please tell me what you're trying to do right now? Blaine, I said no. Wait a minute. Yes, it's complete. But what is it? Oh, uh, just a 4,000 degree homemade explosive. What? So unbeknown to me, the cleric now had a bomb hotter than pure magma, and combined with giant spider venom they found in a cave, gunpowder by collecting seashells and sulfur, and, I'm sorry for anyone eating right now, literal poop, they plastered all of it onto the tips of around a dozen iron javelins. Their weapons of mass destruction were complete, and it was time to slay the dragon turtle. Oh, I see you're approaching me. Well, come as close as you'd like. My steaming breath will melt the flesh from your bones. The Kill first me. spear dealt 135 damage. The turtle only had 340 health and they still had 11 more to throw. Now, at least for the turtle's sake, having fire resistance helped against a large portion of the explosives. So the only way the party would be able to kill the beast now is if they... We're here to fight. Wait, where'd the turtle go? Neither the dragon turtle, nor the other teams in the battle royale even got to take a turn in the combat. If anything, I felt bad for the NPCs, because for the week's worth of time everyone was on that island, the turtle was killed in less than six seconds. After how hard the players prepared for this, I'm glad it turned out well for them. Especially knowing that the turtle was actually considered beyond deadly on the encounter calculator. This was one of those gem moments where the party thought outside the box and had their plans actually work. It's rare but when it happens, it's so beautiful. I'll also say this now, I wasn't upset in the slightest that they managed to win this fast. Just to make explaining the story faster, I had to skip over a lot of the more specific details, but in reality they were sciencing the heck out of everything. What they gained in brains, they made up in brawn, and as a good dungeon master, it was just my job to make sure they had more than one way to beat the challenge. I just, you know, didn't expect them to use thermite bombs. In the end, Sebastian got his deck of many things back, the party returned to their original planet, and we ended up marking this session as having one of the most memorable fight scenes in D&D history. Thanks for sticking around guys, and a reminder that this video was sponsored by Grim Hollow. It's the spooky season, and what better way to celebrate than with some new dark ways to build your characters. Grim Hollow's new player's handbook for 5e has dozens of features to choose from, new spells using blood magic, and a slew of grisly magical items to collect. Being able to turn into an elemental just sounds so cool, and it boggles my mind that none of these rules exist in any official rulebook. If you'd like, you can pre-order a copy using the link down below. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video.